It's the Buick Show. It's the Pearl Show. It's the Buick Pearl Show. Presented by your Buick dealer. How I love to buy my Buick with my love. With Milton's guest stars, Peter Lawford, Carol Channing, and Maria Riva. Oh, I know that very soon we'll take a honeymoon, my beauty, my love. You are all away. Thank you. Three weeks really pass in jig time. Then you'll be back on pay. Uh -huh. You'll miss me very much, I know. And I don't blame you if you're feeling low. Now, where do you intend to go on your three weeks off? There's a moon over Miami to shine on your love and you. And while you walk, and while you talk, he'll admire the view. Let it snow where you're going. Let the wind keep on blowing. Here's how to keep warm in spite of the storm. Go walking in your winter underwear. It looks like you're dressed for a cruise to Havana. But please let me warn you. Before you set sail, I've been to Havana, <laughs> and they taught me their rumba. I did in Roseland, and they threw me in jail. Perhaps your happiness lies right under your eyes, here in your own backyard. It might be great fun at that, to stay where I'm at, here in my own backyard. In old Manhattan, the Queens and Staten Island, too, there's so much you can do. In Swank Cafe, Honky Tonk, out in Brooklyn or in the Bronx, Saddle Whitty, what a city, New York's a wonderful town. Central Park at the zoo, you look at monkeys, they get peanuts, free from weenuts, New York's a wonderful town. New York, where every day is Thanksgiving, New York, where there's no better living. In Sutton Place, Gracie Square, if you're merely a millionaire. In the Blue Book, the well-to-do book, New York's a wonderful town.
want to tell you? Girls and boys, you're out of breath, too, huh? <laughs> very well, we're gonna... I want you to have a very good vacation. You won't have to work this hard anymore. And incidentally, you're all invited to the farewell surprise party that I'm throwing for myself tonight. I'm throwing a farewell surprise party for myself. You're throwing a party? Yeah. Where's the surprise? I'm paying for it. <laughs> no, all kidding aside, we're going to have really a swell, a lot of fun to play games, and we'll all have some real Chicago Tribune. I really What mean. do you mean a good Chicago Tribune? <laughs> well, since the newspaper strike in New York, there's no more good times. I can't hear myself. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I know that you're all going to be wearing your Christmas holidays, and I want you to have a... Don't think that I've forgotten you for your Christmas holidays. I have one of these for each one of you. Oh! Isn't it lovely? Got you all a brand new Buick. <laughs> this is not the Buick. This is the, this is the little light that goes in the glove compartment. <laughs> Well, that's a good start on a Buick. This year, I'll give you the light. Next year, I'll give you the hubcap. Following year, I'll give you the rear view mirror. And by 1986, you'll all have a brand new 1953 Buick. <laughs> I want you to have a love. And don't forget, kids, don't forget to be at the party tonight, the big surprise party. Still on. Okay. Oh, I'll put one of these big surprise party I'm giving for all of you, and you'll all be there. You understand? Big party thrower, Elsa Meeple. There he is. Howdy Doody's brother off duty. <laughs> The big star is giving a big party for all the little people who slave for him all year. That's right, that's right. So delightful. Thank you. So delectable. Yeah. So deductible. I was... <laughs> now listen, Francis, look. This is the year of goodwill toward men. Goodwill toward men. And in your point, I'm going to stretch your point, and I'm going to include you. You know what you mean? So let's not have any fights anymore. Let's, let's make up. Huh? I say? Let's make up. I'm glad you said that. Make up! <laughs> Are you kidding with this? That's a corny bit. That's out of date. My sponsor threw that powder puff out three years ago. Should have kept the powder puff and thrown I you was out. Not How can you say that? My sponsor... Look at me. You ruined my brother's coat. You kidding me? <laughs> my, spo my sponsor loves me. He adores me. Why, my, when, the, when the Buick people meet me on the street, they wrap their arms around me. Better they should wrap their cards around me. I was... <laughs> Are you kidding? After last week's program, the sponsor called up my mother and congratulated her. Sure, even she's funnier than you. My mother's funnier than you. Just be careful what you say about your mother. Your mother's a fine woman. I didn't say You she... should be very good to your I'm mother. very good. You know, she did a lot for you. That's right. She started me off on the right road. She should have started you off on the right cliff. I was... <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hurts your clammy claws off me. The shrink and the shantung. The shrink and the shantung. <laughs> now, listen, to... I want to just for that, there'll be nothing hanging from me on your Christmas tree. The only thing I want hanging on my Christmas tree is you. I was <laughs> very, very funny. Now, let me tell you one more thing, and let me get through with you, because I don't want to start arguing with Blitzen, Donna, or what are you, Prancer? Francis is the name. Francis. I can't tell you reindeers apart. Now, look. <laughs> Francis, the wet-nosed reindeer. The wet-nosed reindeer. Yeah. Oh, that's such sophisticated repartee. Yeah, the wet-nosed reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is really befitting a regular GBS. GBS? George Bernard Shaw? No, great big flaw. I was... <laughs> Well, not only do you not get a gift from me, but you can't come to the surprise party I'm giving tonight. I can't come no, to the party. No, you can't come to the party. This is truly the joyous holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. I have to go and fix the script up for my this week's program. I've got to get Oh, my... yeah, yeah, I saw the script. You saw the yeah. script. You like it? Good? Nothing. I was... <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm going to see Max and fix up the script. I yeah. don't want to see you anymore. Imagine. Every week, 40 million people let him into their homes. Does nothing for television, but it's wonderful for exterminators. I'm getting very good at typing. This is very neat. Tomorrow I'm going to try it with a ribbon and a typewriter. <laughs> what do you? What does it matter whether I can type or not when Milton is going away for three weeks? I won't let him go. I'll kill him and then I'll kill myself. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll make him suffer. I'll kill myself first and then I'll kill him. Uh, Max, I uh, need a little editing on the script and I want you to have it retyped for Peter Lawford and Maria Reaver and Carol Channing. Milton, if you go away for three weeks, I'll be left all alone. Yeah, what do, what I... do I do without you? Where will I go? Well, you've got three weeks off. Go on a long trip. But three weeks? I'll go crazy. That's a short trip. <laughs> can't, you, can't you visit somebody? Visit somebody. Well, I could visit my mom. 
mother. Oh, good. Visit your mother. But she lives with me. I was... <laughs> Why don't you take me with you where you're going? Now, Max, you? I'm telling you, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, I love it there. You love it there? Yes. We could do so many things together. <laughs> we could have such a wonderful time, couldn't I? I was... <laughs> Look, Miss Fortune, I don't know where I'm going. I may, may go on a hunting trip. I don't know. I might want to rough it. It's silly. I, you don't know anything about hunting. Can oh, you... I know all about hunting. You do? I've had my trap set for years. I just don't catch anybody. <laughs> what do you use for bait? Just me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Try using live bait, will you please? Yeah. <laughs> hunting is very, very rugged. Did you ever, did you ever hunt deer? No, darling, but I'll try. I was... <laughs> I even go duck hunting. You know anything about duck hunting, do you? Well, I don't have to. You don't know have to know anything about... Now a butcher delivered. I was... <laughs> Too bad your mother's doctor delivered. Now, Max, please. <laughs> all done and typed. I've got to take it over to Peter Lawford. He's waiting in the rehearsal hall for me. I've got to get it all done for the show tonight. Incidentally, my surprise party's tonight, and i got to get... What time will you pick me up? I would pick you up. I'm not going to pick you. I'm not going to take you. No, I've got beautiful Carol Channing. She starred... In the original Broadway production of Gentleman Fur Blonde, she's a gorgeous girl. Got Maria Riva, gorgeous girl. <laughs> I want to go with them. Who, who'd want to take you out? <laughs> I, I, I'd like to go with you, Milton. You'd like to go Listen, with... if they don't go with you, then will you take me? No, Ma Max, please, you should look. They're holding a big three meeting in Bermuda. Why don't you take along your other head and make it a big five down there? <laughs> Lousing up my own jokes now. That's... <laughs> those are the ones I own, too. <laughs> Max, please, I don't think, I'm getting, so, you're getting me mixed up. I got the show to do tonight, you get me all mixed up. I don't know what I'm saying. In the first place, I don't think you should play second fiddle to anybody. Oh, I don't mind playing second fiddle. You don't? I'm just glad to be in the orchestra. I was, Max, <laughs> you sit down, please relax. I'm going to go next door, and I'm going to rehearsal hall. Now, leave me alone, will you, please? Why would Milton want to take Maria Reaver and Carol Channing instead of me? I'm much better for Milton. I could look after him. I could iron his shirts, I could iron his ties, I could iron his handkerchief. Maybe that's the trouble. Maybe I'm pressing too much. Get a load of these kids. Beautiful girls, huh? Looks like Errol Flynn's old address book coming to life. <laughs> Is Peter Lawford around here? Peter Lawford, Peter. Hello, Milton. Oh, Peter. <laughs> Peter, it's good to see you. Peter? <laughs> Let me get you a letter, Peter. <laughs> Peter, why did you send me the letter, Peter? Peter. <laughs> Peter. 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 Very clever, huh? Funny, funny? Very. Yeah? You sound just like Charles Boyer. I was... <laughs> uh, I was Gabriel Heater. Peter, I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy to have you on my show. Really, we have a wonderful dramatic scene for you. It's really tailor-made. Really? Yeah, we were going to try to get Taylor for it, but he wasn't available, so we settled for you. you understand? <laughs> well, look, Milton, yeah. don't do many favors. What do you mean? No, because I've branched out. You've branched out? Yes, I, I do comedy now. You yes, do comedy? I've been appearing in nightclubs. Yeah? You know, comedy, that's a whole new field. Is it? You ought to try it. <laughs> <laughs> nightclubs? Listen, kid, I originated the nightclub formula right. when you were on your early formula. <laughs> I had the Heidi High when you were in your Dighty High. <laughs> I'm not kidding, you can call them out. I made my bundles in nightclubs. I'm not kidding. I made my bundle at the Chaperie, the Carnival, Copa City, the Sands, Belmont Park. You made your bundle at Belmont Park? No, that's where I delivered the bundle, I'm very oh, sorry. <laughs> the horses I bet on follow other horses. But you see, I made my money, and you're talking, you're talking to the nightclub man. Of course, I'm nightclubs, I'm America's number one. <laughs> and there's nothing lower than number one. Sit <laughs> <laughs> down, son. That's my joke. America's number one. It's my joke. Don't start stealing jokes. Where do you think you'll get stealing other people's material? Uh, Copa City, the sand, I was... the color. <laughs> All right, Pete, if you do work in nightclubs and the nightclub jokes that you want, say, I can give you 500 jokes all told. All told by whom? I was... <laughs> all told by meme. That's by whom. Boy, I'd like to get a load of you in nightclubs. You ought to be a thrill. I mean, you just can't come out looking tall, dark, and handsome and look so attractive. And he can do it, too. You must be a sensation. If you have anything sensationally that you can do by yourself is especially... I'll be glad to do it with you. <laughs> I really, well, I, I don't know anything. No, I don't know what to do. You don't know what to do in a nightclub? No, I, I don't. Well, let me give you a few pointers, son. Step right in. 
very easy. Will you listen to me, Pete? Yes, sir. Very simple. You see, to be a hit in cafes, you gotta be loaded with ability. Now, with the competition that we have nowadays, you gotta be versatility. But there really is very little I can do. Well, and maybe, maybe Uncle Milty can help you, huh? That magic pleases everyone And I'll be glad to show you how it's done You gotta practice, Pete, if you wanna try you learn the hand is quicker than the eye If doing magic makes a fella click Yeah Perhaps I'll please them with this simple trick <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Is that what you mean, Milton? Yes, yeah, what I mean Well, I can't do that <laughs> Can't do it. No. <laughs> Simple trick. Come here, Sonny. Come here. And they'll love you, Peter, if you sing like Lanza. Just hit those high notes like you heard me do. And I, in order to get by, must hit a note that's loud and clear. And way up for the mind. Is that what you mean? Well, <laughs> you can always bring back some nostalgia and take the audience down memory lane. You can dance like Pat Rooney, and you won't miss. Are you suggesting a dance like this? Is that... You know that's what I mean. <laughs> Come here, let me tell you something. Pete. Now you've been ribbon, Pete. You've been fibbing, Pete. Telling me there's nothing that you can do. That's not so at all. I don't know at all. Why do you assume that point of view? Because anything I can do, you can do better. You can do anything better than I. No, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Any note I can sing, you can sing higher. You can sing any note higher than I. No, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yes, no, I can. No, I can. No, can. Shut up. While I was doing magic, you had me looking tragic. When I did a few steps, you started doing new steps. I bet you can tell some jokes, too. Isn't that true? No, I'm just like you. Well, why should we bicker and quarrel and argue? We should say we're equal. Leave it at that. Peter, I have a scheme. Let's both go as a team. Cause you can't beat a fella like Peter. Thank you for the praise. Between you and me, it's easy to see we will kill the people in cafes. Pete, I'm telling you, you sing and you dance and everything. <laughs> But you're not doing it on my show. <laughs> it's out of the show, it's out of the show. You're not going to do it on my show. Oh, that's too bad. What do you say? I say it's too bad. No, it's too good. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, well, what I really asked you to come here for, I want you to do a dramatic sketch, and I got a very one... No, this is not the sketch. Oh. I got Max, my secretary, she's editing it. Max, Max, will you bring that scene in it? Uh, oh, pardon me. This is my secretary, Max. This is Peter Lawford. How do you do? Peter Lawford? Well, you're the one who murders all those people in the movie. <laughs> That's, that's Peter Laurie. This is that great leading man from California. He makes love to the girls. He kisses and hugs them. He makes love to them. That's a nice way to die, too. I was... <laughs> Mr. Lawford? Yes. Milton is giving a party after the show tonight. Would you like to take a beautiful girl? Well, Ma Max, this is so sudden. We just met, you know, and it's... A... Oh, I didn't mean me. Oh. With a tall, beautiful girl like Carol Channing on the show, why would you want to take a small, beautiful girl like me? Uh, well, I... Uh, <laughs> give me an idea. Uh... How would you like to take Carol Channing and I'll take Maria Reba? Huh? No, Milton. Uh -huh. You take me. Uh -huh. Mr. Lawford can take both of them. Uh -huh. There's enough of him for two. Oh, will you stop? <laughs> Please, 
Uh, what, what do you say? You want to do it? Look, I, I've got, I've got an eye. Come on. Try to figure out a way to get Peter Lawford to take Maria Reeve and Carol Channing to the party tonight. I'd be very, very glad to get away from this girl for my three weeks vacation. Believe me, she's driving me crazy. Where, where are you going on your vacation, though? What is it? I said, where are you going on your vacation? Oh, I don't know. I just get my car and drive around. Oh, that's <laughs> always good. Sure. What, uh, what kind of a car do you drive? <laughs> Will you repeat that for the West Coast, please? <laughs> I say, what kind of car do you drive? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Law Ford. I mean, henceforth, you'll be known as Mr. Law Buick, not Mr. Law Ford. <laughs> I happen to drive the best car on the road. <laughs> oh, how I love to drive my Buick with my sweetheart sitting by my side. Oh. That's right, Milton. Sing it out. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, especially you ladies. Tonight we have some exceptionally timely advice for you about this business of buying an automobile. It's timely because these are bargain days right now at your Buick dealers. And when it comes to picking bargains, as every husband knows, it's the woman of the house who's the keenest shopper. So I'm going to disqualify myself as a bargain expert tonight in favor of a lady who has just been shopping the automobile showrooms, Mrs. Jan Sherwood. Now, Mrs. Sherwood, would you mind telling our audience how many different automobile showrooms you visited this week? Altogether, Mr. Hayworth, I shopped the showrooms of 12 different makes of cars. Uh, 12? And were they all in the Buick's price class? Well, now, that depends on what you mean by <coughs> Buick's price class. I found, for instance, that some cars among the so-called low-price three actually cost more than some Buick's. And that's just one of several surprising facts that I'm afraid most folks who are shopping for car bargains don't realize about Buick. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why don't you take it from here and let our audience in on them all, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hayward. And I think I'll take that Buick special over there as a typical Buick bargain. Now, if I were going to pick the bargain of bargains of all 12 cars I shopped this week, it would certainly be this beautiful big Buick sedan. And I found that this Buick delivered for appreciably less than several models of the low price three, despite the fact that it gives you so much more cars. Specifically, as my notes show, this Buick has from 15 to 30 more horsepower. More room inside, front and rear. And here's what my notes say about the demonstration ride I took in each of them. Frankly, there just isn't any comparison. And I wish I had time to show you my notes on all the cars that I compared with Buick. It really makes you wonder, how can Buick give you so much for so little? <laughs> I know, Mrs. Sherwood. I've uh, often wondered that myself. But all you have to do is to look at the rock-bottom figures on the price tag on this big Buick two-door six-passenger sedan. Just stack this price against that on other cars you might consider. And remember, it includes standard equipment charged for as extras by others. It also includes delivery in the very city in which your TV station is located. You certainly can't beat Buick bargain. More than that, Mr. Hayworth, I was amazed at the high trade-in allowances Buick dealers are now offering. They're just about tops, I found. And that's mighty important, Mr. Sherwood. When you subtract the top allowance for your present car, from this low price, you sure got yourself a money-saving bargain. But definitely. And I do hope you folks out there will check this with your Buick dealers. This week, for sure. That's right, folks. You couldn't pick a better time to see. <laughs> For I know that very soon I'll go on my honeymoon, my Buick, my love. What happens at dress rehearsals, we get applause for commercials. Pete, let's, <laughs> let's go and look over the script. This is a very, very great dramatic scene. Yeah, sure. Before they come back, I, I've got to figure out some way to get Peter Lawford to take Carol Channing and Marie Reba to the party tonight, because then Milton will be left with nobody. That's me. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Carol Channing about that. Oh, here she comes now. Honey. Miss Channing, may I ask you a question? Sure, but where are you, honey? 
You are. My gosh, sweetie, is that all there is to you? You must have been born during the meat shorty. <laughs> oh, are you five feet? No, I'm just four feet, twelve inches. <laughs> Miss Channing, do you like parties? Oh, yeah, we had a lot of parties while I was in my last show. Oh, which show was that? Gentlemen prefer blondes. They do? Well, either I'm not a blonde or Milton isn't a gentleman. <laughs> is there something between you and Milton? Oh, well, he hasn't said anything, but I've always felt that there was a bond between us. Oh, bonds are awfully nice. But be sure you get Series E. They mature in ten years. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I've matured in two years just waiting around for Milton. You see, Miss Shannon, I'm desperately in love with each other. <laughs> you to go to the party with him tonight. Will you go with Peter Lawford? Peter Lawford. Now, how much does he look like? <laughs> I like a quiet, settled gentleman. A gentleman who will quietly settle something on me. <laughs> Is that all you want from a man? Money? Oh, no. Diamonds are nice. <laughs> Remy, are you only interested in, in material things? Well, if the material is mink or sable. Have you never given you a present? Oh, sure, on Christmas. Oh, what was it? Mink, sable, ermine, beaver, seal, rabbit. Well, honey, say something. I'm waiting till you get to corduroy bathrobe. <laughs> corduroy bathrobe? Honey, we may have to throw you out of the female sex. <laughs> but, Miss Channing, money isn't everything. Which would you rather marry, a young man with no money or an old man with a lot of money? I'd like a young man with a lot of old money. <laughs> you see, honey, I learned all about this back in my hometown. Oh, uh, where? Little Rock. Little Rock? Is there an echo around here? <laughs> no, that's me. We're almost alike. Only you're the large economy size. <laughs> Well, let me tell you all about Arkansas, honey. Little Rock is in Arkansas. That's why they call it Little Rock, Arkansas. Well, I just never will forget the first time I came to New York City. I tell you, I walked into one of those there highfalutin nightclubs, and do you know that I walked into the bar... And Little rock, 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 little rock
won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you at the automat. Men grow cold as girls grow old, and we all lose our charm in the end. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Damn it! Girl's best friend. <laughs> Thinking, I was thinking of going to Hollywood for a picture, but I figured, what's the difference? I'll go to the Roxy, maybe see the same picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, Carol. Oh, Carol. Milton, sweetie, I'm oh, so glad to see you. It's good to see you, Carol. You're yes. looking Miss wonderful. Miss Channing, thank you. Miss Channing, I'd like to meet Mr. Lawford. Miss Channing, Mr. Lawford. Mr. Lawford, Miss Channing. Miss Channing, you're not paying attention. Why, Miss Channing? Milton, please. Milton, please. <laughs> Carol. It's good to see you. Tell me, what's, what's new, huh? Well, this one is new, and this one is... Oh, yeah, he's got an engagement ring. Oh, yeah. She's lovely. She's engaged. She collects bonds. <laughs> well, I was engaged to the gentleman who gave me this ring yeah. until I read the inscription in it. The gentleman gave you this ring? Yeah. You read the inscription? Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? In case of fire, break glass. <laughs> You know, you know, I want to tell you, you know, the first time, Carol, that I saw you, I think I saw you in that show, Jennifer Fur Blondes, and you were really wonderful. You were a very big hit in that show. Oh, and I never will forget that big bunch of flowers you sent me opening night, Milton. Yeah. It was so big, I didn't know whether I'd just won a race or died. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. Channing, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lawson. One number that you, that you did in that show, Diamonds are a Girl's Best Friend, and yeah. here's your diamond back in oh, yeah, That was yeah. really big, big hit number on Broadway. That was a big hit number on Broadway. Well, you know, Milton, we played that show all over on the road and yeah. everywhere. You know? And sometimes the, the hit number was Little Rock. Oh, it was? Yeah, we even played it in New Jersey. What was the big number in New Jersey? Bigelow 99907. <laughs> yeah, but I was... Mr. Lawford's number is Plot and I All right, look, look. Speaking of numbers, Carol, I've got a great number for you doing the show this week. Uh -huh. Oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Uh, 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 Miss Channing, this is uh, Mr. Lawford. Oh, hello, Mr. Lawford. How do you do, <laughs> Mr. Lawford? Uh, uh, Mr. Pearl? Yeah? I'd like you to meet your secretary, Matt. Oh, please. <laughs> Stop it. I gotta get on with the rehearsal now. Please, will you uh, hold the script a minute? Uh, kids, would you sit right down here, please? Right. Will you sit down here? Everything will be fine. Uh, Pete, you wanna hold the chair there for <laughs> expecting Maria Riva. She should be here. Where is she? she here should. I am. I was oh Maria. <laughs> How are you, Maria? Gee, it's good. Miss Riva, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lawson. Oh, please now, Max, please. Maria, you look lovely, just as charming as your adorable and very, very talented mother, Marlena Dietrich. I want to tell you, you look very, very <laughs> Marlena Dietrich. That's what all you old timers tell me. I mean, <laughs> Miss Reba, I'd like you to meet a young timer. I was, uh, old timer? You don't mean to think that I'm an old timer, do you? Well, after all, Milton, you have been in show business for 40 years. Yes, but I was five years old when I started and figure it out. Five from 40, I'm 35 years old. <laughs> That's all I am. Really? Yeah. I thought you were older than that. Oh, what do you mean? How could I be? My mother's only 37. <laughs> For that kind of counting, in two years, she'll be Miss Rangold. Miss <laughs> Reaver, I'd like you to meet a newborn baby. I was not pleased. <laughs> uh, please, Maria, after the show, 
we're having a very big party, and I thought that maybe you and I could go together. Oh, yes. Milton and I would love to have you join us. Max, please. Grab your Get over there. <laughs> Can you give Miss Reaver a script, please, and let's start the rehearsal, please. Uh, oh, Maria, uh, do you know Miss Carol Chan? Hello. 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 And uh, I don't think you know Peter Lawford, Miss Marie Reaver. No, we've never met, Miss. Never met. <laughs> Hello, Hello, darling. <laughs> Still, they never met. Now, let's get on with the rehearsal. <laughs> you sit over here, and this, this script that I want to tell you, I've seen you, uh, Maria, darling, on so many great television shows, and you're really one of the finest dramatic personalities, greatest actresses I've ever seen on television. But I got the, but I got one of the biggest kicks the other night when I saw you do a panel show. You doing a panel show? Yeah. So I figured, I figured that uh, you know she's a very wonderful actress. You know what I mean? And she's got plenty of K N O W L E D G E. Canola. <laughs> canola. No, not canola. I said she's got brains. Oh, that stuff. I was... <laughs> so I was thinking that I saw you do this panel show. How about all of us doing a panel show? Another panel show? Yeah. I didn't know there were any tables and chairs left in television. Oh, no. That's all the television needs, Milton, another panel show. Well, this is going to be a different type of panel show altogether. This panel show we'll call, uh, What's My Line? No, no, that's no, that's not a good title for a show. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll call it, we'll call it, Where's My Racket? And we'll have, we'll have some people come on the show, and we'll try to guess what racket they're in. You understand? It'll be a very, very... They'll come on the show, we'll try to guess what racket they're in, and of course we don't need a script because we can ad-lib the whole thing ourselves. And Peter, uh, Peter, you, you are going to start it off, and you'll be the moderator. You understand? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome once again to What's My Racket? My name is John. Since the newspaper strike in New York, you know there are no more dailies. <laughs> now, first, I'd like to introduce our panel. And immediately to my right is the bright, scintillating, beautiful, charming, brilliant, glamorous, adorable, but what good is it she's married, Maria Riva. And to my right is a young lady who has collected more ice than Betty Furness, and who has more brains in her little finger than she has in her big finger, Miss Carol Chen. And to my right is that lovely cover girl of Field and Stream magazine <laughs> who appears with us tonight through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, whose latest movie, How to Marry a Millionaire, she's been waiting in line all afternoon to get him to see, and who's been excused from the line to make this broadcast, Miss Matt. <laughs> powder room. <laughs> well, I guess you're all anxious to play What's My Racket, so if our first guest will sign in, please. <laughs> oh, would you sign in, please? <laughs> and now we'll see what this gentleman's racket is. Just a minute, I'll put this ratchet down on this fire hose. <laughs> Would you walk in front of the panel? Can I, uh... Now you have one free guest, Mr. Burns. Free guest, may I see your hands, please? <laughs> you see you have mustard here, egg, A1 sauce, chili. I take one quick guess, this man is a sloppy eater. <laughs> no, no, you couldn't be wrong, huh? And we better dispense with the free questions, because Mr. Jones has his engine double parked, and he's got to be back at the fire station. <laughs> All right, now we'll start with Miss Reba. Does your work take you into people's homes? Yes. Are people usually there? Well, it's better for me if they're out. <laughs> Do you sometimes have to break in? Sometimes I have to break out. Are you a goner? 
No, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones is not a garnet. Next, Miss Channing. Um, this work that you do, do you wax the work? No. Well, how do you get to work? I slide down a pole. <laughs> Are you a monkey? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Jones is not a monkey. Next, Max. Are you married? <laughs> yes. All right, Max, next question. I've lost interest in it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jones, does your business keep you on call any hour of the day or night? Yes. Do you have to get to where you're going in a hurry, like in an emergency? Yes. I see. Do you use water in your business? Yes, plenty of water. I see. Uh, when people call you, is it for something unexpected? Yes, well, uh, sometimes it's expected. Do you use any special instruments in your racket? Yes. Just a minute, will we have a conference, please? What do you think? He says he's called in on emergency. Yes, he uses instruments. And plenty of water. Yeah, it's for something people are expecting. Yeah, I got it. Are you an obstetrician? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Mr. Jones is a fireman. A fireman. Oh, well, oh, well, why didn't you give us a hint? <laughs> oh, hint. And now for our mystery guest. Put on your blinkers, panel. <laughs> Mystery guest, sign in. <laughs> All right, now here's our mystery guest. See what you can do with this. Could, uh, could I hear the guest say something, please? Ho, 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 Merry Christmas! <laughs> Are there always bells clanging like that when you go to work? Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! Do you, uh, do you have to break into a house sometimes? Oh, 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 Like, for instance, do you have to come in by way of the roof or the chimney? Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! Are you married? Oh, uh, never. <laughs> conference. Let's have a conference. He says he comes down the chimney. Yes, sometimes he has to come down the chimney. Wears a red suit. Yeah. yeah. And his bell's clanging when he goes to work. We've got it. Are you a fireman? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. And if the panel will take off their masks, they will see that our mystery guest is none other than... Well, I might have known it. It's my brother Frank. He only works once a year. I might have known it. I, I don't know if we should do a panel-type show on the show this week. Do you think we should do a panel-type show? I, I don't think so, Milton. I think you ought to stick to what you know best. Stick to what I know best? Yes. Old jokes. Old jokes. Very clever. I think you should stick to a, a show like This Is Your Life. Of course, I saw some of your pictures, and that isn't your life. I'll get the girl's opinion. Maria, uh, Carol, uh, do you think that we should stick to the... Uh, panel idea of doing a panel show. Well, I'll you. tell you one thing. I really don't think we should do it. Not when we have such beautiful girls on our show, such as Maria and Carol, and we don't need an extra man or anything. Well, we? it's always nice to have an extra man. <laughs> That's what I always say, honey. <laughs> it's so nice to have a man around the house. Mm. Oh, it's so nice to have a man around the house. Mm. Just a guy in tights and slippers who will eat your breakfast. Skippers and will help you zip your zippers. It's so nice. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Mm. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Mm. Someone kind of knows you treasure any simple little pleasure, like a full length mink to cover last year's blouse. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Hey, Pete, I want you to listen now. We've been talking about the show all, all day, but yeah. look, tonight, let's talk about... I want the girls to hear me. Talk about the surprise party you see tonight. I'm going to take Maria Riva, and you take Carol Channing, okay? Huh? Well, I've got a surprise for your party, Milton. What is it? I'm not coming. I would... <laughs> You're not going to be there? You're not going to attend? You're not going to show up? No, no, you left one out. What? I ain't going. I ain't going? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, as a matter of fact, I thought of taking Maria Riva to El Morocco tonight. You're going to take Maria? Maria Riva's not coming either? No, she's not going to be there. No? Huh? She won't show up. She can't attend. You left one out. She ain't going. <laughs> Look, why don't you take Carol to the party? Me take Carol? Did you get a load of that, that girl? Did you ever listen to the way she talks? That would be going out like with a tall Max. <laughs> one of us has got to break down and take out Carol. You're more broken down than I am. Why don't you take Carol? Was... <laughs> All right. I'll go over and I'll speak to Maria Riva. Pardonnez-moi. Je vais causer avec son téléphone au TikTok. Mademoiselle Maria Riva. Hey, uh, I was thinking of something. Would you, uh, would you like to go to the party? No. Thank you. I'm going to ask you once more. Would you like to go to the party? No. I'll just give you two minutes to make up your mind. Two minutes. And it won't take me more than two minutes to tell you folks that we Americans are noted for having our own ideas about things, for expressing our individual preferences. That's why I believe it's so significant that with about 20 different cars to choose from, Americans are buying more Buicks than any other car except the so-called low-priced three. So you don't have to take my word for the fact that Buicks to buy. Public preference makes that plain. There's no doubt that Buick has what people want in the lightning getaway and complete smoothness of TT Dynaflow, in the advanced performance of Super and Roadmaster's big V8, in Buick's big car comfort and room. <clears throat> and this overwhelming preference for Buick means that your Buick dealer is acquiring many extra fine trade-ins these busy days. You see, the 1953 Buick offers such outstandingly better performance that many people who would normally keep their present cars another couple of years are turning them in right now on new 1953 Buicks. So you can be sure your Buick dealer has a variety of wonderful used cars, a really wide selection of exceptional low mileage bargains in better condition all around. In fact, practically all of these recent model cars have, have had but one owner. And what's more, your Buick dealer can show you the service record on many of them. And you'll be glad to know that under your Buick dealer's all-square used car program, every car is thoroughly inspected, reconditioned, guaranteed, and sold with the same assurance of satisfaction that you get when you buy a new Buick. So before you shop elsewhere, stop first at your Buick dealer's, your best bet for a spectacular used car buy. Remember, you get a better used car from a Buick dealer. Maria, the time is up. Have you made up your mind? Am I taking you to the party? I'm sorry, Milton. I can't go to your party. Huh? My babysitter is in Hollywood. Your babysitter is in Hollywood? Yes. My mother is making a picture there. Good night, Milton. <laughs> well, I guess that leaves you. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, would you like to uh, go to the party with me tonight? I'm sorry, Milton, but I promised to go with somebody else. I'm on my way over to pick him up now. You gonna pick him up now? Mm -hmm. uh, who, who are you gonna pick up? Where is he? Him. Over there? <laughs> <laughs> well, as usual, I'm stuck with you know who, but I'm not taking her. I'm not gonna ask her, so I won't have to take her. Nobody well, can. Well, Milton, mm -hmm. don't make snap judgment. Oh, now, please, Max, please. I'll give you two weeks to make up your mind. Two weeks? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you, so you're wasting your time. But you said if you didn't take those other girls, you'd take me. Now, please, I'm not asking you, so you, you won't go with me, understand? All right, then I won't go to the party tonight. That's right. I'll go to doing after the show. You go on? I'll go to doing after the show. What you doing after the show? Nothing now. You asked me, so you have to take I was... me. I was... I had nothing doing. Now, will you please leave me alone? All right, then I won't go to the party I... tonight. Good, good. Don't go. I'll pick up my own date, and I'll go somewhere else. You gonna pick up your own date? Who are you gonna pick up? Him. <laughs> You're gonna pick up him, huh? <laughs> Great party I'm giving. Nobody's coming. Fine thing for the star to show. Not only I'm the star, but I'm so charming. But it walks out on me. 
Ah, here comes the girl. I can always depend on the girl, of course. Uh, I can't I, come. I, I was... I, I I'm thought, not going to be there. I, I thought... Busy I, tonight. I was... I've got a date. Yeah, but I... I was, Another engaged. I, I was... Busy. And away they go to the Jackie Gleason show. <laughs> what do I care? Let them go. Who, who needs girls? Me. I have to have it all by myself. All the food that I ordered, I'll eat it myself. I'll have drinks. I'll have indigestion all by myself. I'll go my way by myself. This is the end of romance.
folks. Thank you. I, I would like to add that the more Buick dealers that I meet, the more I'm fully convinced of one thing, that a Buick dealer is a mighty fine citizen in his community, a man that you know that you can trust and give you a square deal when he sells your car. His good reputation in your community is very important to him, and that's why he provides good service, and he's always anxious to keep his customers fully satisfied with their cars. So believe me, folks, you're making a very happy choice when you buy a car from your Buick dealer. I'll be back again January 5th, a three-week vacation, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, my very good friend Bob Hope will be back with you again, and I want to thank you all. And I will be back January 5th with my guest star, Martha Ray, and my new singing fine, Charlie Applewhite. Ladies and gentlemen, just until then, may I say, leave you with one thought. May I just say, there's just one place for me, ladies and gentlemen, and that's near you. It's been a pleasure, and may I say, good night, and God bless you all. Thank you.